This man describes his relationship as stuck. Stuck! Hi people, welcome if it's your first time, my name is Tali Adewale and this is Despite Them. You saw the title, we are doing Love Island USA Season 5, Episode 15. Let's get on into it. But before I do, I want to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am so happy that you guys are liking my reviews, especially on Love Island and Love After Divorce. That These shows have been amazing. And I'm so grateful for you guys for subscribing and tuning in and watching and commenting. The comments have been amazing. So thank you so much for the love. The, the season is giving and I'm here for it. So we're going to be doing these till the end. The format I wanted to let you guys know before we dive on in is I usually do Sunday episodes as um, single reviews and then Monday, Tuesdays drop as uh, together on Wednesdays, uh, Thursdays. And Fridays will be one episode. So that's kind of how I'm doing it for now. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Because it looks like it might be a juicy episode. So if the episodes are really given, I will probably do single reviews. But most times I try to double them except for the episodes on Sunday. So without further ado, let's dive on in because this episode was really good. So we start with Kenan chatting with the guys. And he says that KK is trying to victimize herself and villainize him. And... I'm looking at him, look, I don't like Keenan, but I had to, I had to like tame down the dislike because the dislike was just making me see red. Every time Keenan was on the screen, I was seeing red and I, there was no objectivity there, people. I get what he means by she's trying to play the victim because he says that they've been open throughout the relationship and he's not lying. I hate to agree, but he's not lying. The only thing that I don't like about their relationship is the fact that they did not have a proper conversation going into the hideaway. I feel like that's where it kind of like one person is thinking this solidify th solidifies things and the other person is thinking I'm a, I just want smash and if you're not Nigerian what that means is I just want to have sex you know so <laughs> the, <laughs> that's kind of like where the miscommunication is happening and right now I think these two people are just better off breaking this relationship I don't understand why they're hanging on to each other KK is hanging on because she likes this guy and Keenan is just there because he wants a fallback plan and it's like okay Okay, but moving on. Jonah tells the guys about the Destiny Imani situation, you know, the one we talked about where Destiny tells Imani that she's not done. Um, and then he cr describes the kiss with Imani as juicy, and it just gave me tasty flashbacks. And if you guys know where tasty is from, you know what I mean. And in fact, Jonah is giving me Sammy vibes, if I'm being honest. He is giving me Sammy vibes. But again, he hasn't really done anything for me to not like him. I just don't trust him. Destiny talks with Leo and KK and complains about the kiss. So about Imani and Jonah kissing each other. She didn't like that. Destiny is showing jealous vibes and I'm just very confused. I think we definitely missed miss something, honestly. Because I'm like, where? Where did it come from? She was not into this guy for a long time and all of a sudden she's trying to hold on to him. Like, I'm just confused. And uh, she thinks Jonah should have shut it down with Imani. Now, her problem seemed to be with Jonah and not Imani. And for that, I'm happy because I don't like it when girls fight over men. Like, it just it just doesn't sit right with me, you know? If she's fighting with her man over the situation with another girl, I respect that and I rate that, you know? But she's not really fighting with him. She's talking about everybody else except Jonah. And Jonah is talking about, she's talking about this with everybody else except Destiny. So it's, again, the same immature thing, like... Haven't you guys learned from past seasons? We have 10 whole seasons of Love Island. We have uh, we have Perfect Match. We have Temptation Island. We have everything that people have continuously made the same mistakes. And you guys still don't understand that communication is key? How old do you need to be to understand that? You know, let's just move on, people, because this, this is not a relationship seminar. <laughs> let's just keep on talking about what we're talking about. Okay, so Mike and KK go aside for a chat. Uh, KK, they confirm that the case was good, but he doesn't want to step on toes with the whole Keenan situation, which is contrary to what he said when he said he didn't mind stepping on toes and came and was here for, you know, himself. But I get it. The whole Keenan situation is really weird and it's a whole lot of mess. And I think he sees it that 
she's all for Keenan. So even if he decides to go for her, she's still gonna fall back on Keenan. Everybody can see this except maybe for KK, you know. And then KK says in the confessional that with Mike it isn't meant to be, and I'm like. This was the point where I was like, you know what, KK, I'm done. I can't want for you what you don't want for yourself. And I'm done. I am over it, people. Moving out to the next couple because I don't need I don't need this drama in my life. <laughs> Cause I'm getting too attached and I'm getting too angry. And I realized that in this in this season, in this episode, that I was beginning to hate Keenan with a passion. And it's not that serious. It's a show, you know? So I'm taking a step back from KK because I can't be that invested. And I can't want something that she doesn't want for herself. Uh, Imani pulls Jonah to the top balcony and then he confirms that the kiss was good he lets her know they were definitely flirty and by the end of it her leg was like over him you know he was so giddy even in the confessional I kind of like that look on him he looked good being giddy it, 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 it's a side of him that we haven't really seen I mean I think he was kind of like that in the beginning with uh, Destiny, he was definitely a lot more flirty with her and kind of shut the things down when he saw that she wasn't as open, you know? And um, they sealed things off with a kiss. In fact, they made out. Let's not even say it was a kiss. But something hit me in that instant. And I was like, why do I think that Imani is playing him? Why do I think that Imani has seen her way into the house and is just capitalizing on it? Does anybody else get that vibe? Please let me know in the comment section that somebody else was getting this feeling. Because I'm I'm thinking that I'm paranoid, but I really, really feel like Imani is using him to get into the house. Let me know, people. Harrison invites Emily to sleep under the stars with him, which I thought was romantic. I, I, the way Harrison looks at Emily, I think he really likes her. And yeah, that's all I'll say for that one. Mike was disappointed with how PG the game was. Apparently, he wanted things to be shaken up. Which makes me question his whole motives in this game. In this, well, I did call it a game, so what am I talking about? <laughs> but it does make me question his motives, though. Like, what are you really here for, Mike? Are you here to just be a casa boy? Because that's what casa, casa people do. They, they, they shake things up, you know? Or are you here to genuinely, you know, find a connection and, you know... Like, none of them are genuinely here to find a connection. So what am I, what am I talking about, people? What am I asking here? <laughs> it just made me question his motive. So he's kind of like the new guy that I'm watching and I don't really trust. As at this point in my notes. We'll get to, we'll get to more of that later. Destiny relays the night's events with Amani and to Carmen, Emily, and Hannah. While Jonah and Imani are getting cuddly and cozy in the bathroom, Destiny is exp explaining the whole thing to, to them. And it was just crazy because there was, this was the first, there was two instances where she was talking to people and about Jonah and Imani. And Imani and Jonah were in the bathroom, like, you know, playing, hugging, loving up and all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, Destiny, you're here chatting up and your man is being cozy with another girl there. So what, what exactly are we doing here? Anyway, she sleeps diagonally so, so that Jonah can't sleep in the bed. So he ends up sleeping outside with the cuddlebugs, cuddlebugs, Emily and Harrison. My guess in that instance was that this was Destiny's way of reaching out. You know when people are so closed off, they don't even know how to extend a hand. I know because I used to be like that. I used to be, I could be the girl that will lock up for two weeks. I ain't gonna talk. I won't even talk to you. Not one bit. Like, we could be fighting. Me and my boyfriend could be fighting. Who's my husband now? And I will lock up. You know when they say lock up? Like, not say nothing to this man for like a week straight. No shaking, no dolling. And he would... And it, the only way that I would be able to break that sign because of pride is maybe to do something that will force him to talk to me and then we'll squash it. But I would never, because of pride, I would never be the one to break the silence. I would never be the one to say something first. So I get it. I used to be like that. God saved me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I get it. I get what she was going for, you know? She wanted him to be like, uh, so is this what we're doing? Or am I, can I come in the bed? So it opens the way for them to have a conversation. But it's such a stupid way to start things because he took it as she didn't want to sleep with me, right? Apparently he'd been avoiding her all day and that was her way of trying to get him to talk to her. And in my head, I'm like, Destiny, just walk up to this man and say, why are you avoiding me? Talk, talk to him. Just have a conversation. Why do people do this? Why do people do this? I just don't get it. Uh, Destiny goes over. Mike says, Destiny, come here. In the middle of the night, lights are off, people. And she goes over there, and they have a mini makeout sesh. And I was like, ooh, 
these people be playing hanky panky in this house like just like that his smile at the end of it was really cute though i thought that was really good because his smile was blinding he was very happy with that kiss so it looks like destiny has moved on look mike has moved off of kk and is now on the destiny train hopefully she doesn't get sent home you know carmen and kk talk she tells carmen that mike said he won't pursue her because he doesn't want to step on keenan's toes and carmen made a very good point carmen be making points this last few episodes and i don't like it because i don't want to like her you know but she seems a little more even killed now that she's with kenzo so you know what I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Let's just see how things go. But she made a great point. She said that he probably was getting the the uh, feeling that you are not truly invested in him and that you would end up going back to Keenan if he puts energy into you. And that was true 100% because the episode wasn't even over before KK was saying, I miss him, I want him, I don't want this. And I'm just like, KK, I'm done. I'm done. I can't want for you what you can't want for yourself. Keenan tells Hannah he's irritated with the situation. What's up with Keenan and having shower talks? I don't understand. And why do these women keep talking to him in the shower? Like, what's up with that? It, it has nothing to do with anything. I just think that it's always weird that he has a talk in the shower. And Hannah had very, very, a very, very good conversation. In fact, she had very good advice for him. She said, oh, what did she say? I think she said something along the lines of, uh, for her, she for KK, KK feels like she's not enough. So you have to tell her that she is, if that's what you're feeling, you know? I thought that, look, Bergie has said it, Hannah has said it. These people have given him solid advice. He's not going to take it. I think at this point, KK needs to just break up with, with um, Keenan. No, or Keenan needs to break up with KK. Because KK will never break up with him. Kina needs to break up with her so that he can explore their relationship. Because that's what he wants. I don't understand why he's keeping the girl. He's just keeping her on a string. And wh why she chooses to stay on that string is be it's just beyond me. Destiny tells the girls she kissed Mike in the middle of the night. Because she's like, news travel fast. So I'm just going to let you guys know now. <laughs> before anybody else lets you know you know <laughs> she said it was based off of the fact that uh jonah did not sleep in the room and kk asked her was that random or was it because you were sleeping diagonally <laughs> which they laughed about but she said that that's why she explained that uh she did that because he had avoided her all day and she wanted it to be a way for him to start the conversation and emily tells her that it it may have been the way you were looking at it, but he took it a different way because he seemed very hurt by what you did. And then, um, Destiny, Destiny is it. Destiny is macho. Like, the only thing going on for Destiny is the walls that she has up. Honestly, she's actually a very macho person because she said, okay, I take responsibility for the fact that I did not communicate with him but, or that we didn't handle it properly. And she owned that. She took it. She, she recognized the problem and she owned it. But did she do anything to solve that? No, because they still haven't had a conversation. So even though she recognizes that communication is the problem, she still will not be the first person to pull him and have that conversation. He has to pull her and... Yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I know that that's what she's thinking because I'm like that. Oh, I used to be like that. So I wrote down Jonah and Destiny suffer from com lack of communication, but Jonah is loving the triangle effect because he's getting a lot of attention from Imani. <laughs> so the text comes in and there will be a game session. I wrote down, I hope Keenan gets roasted. <laughs> Mara Higgins from Love Island UK hosts the games and the games are called Face Facts. So America had been voting for a bunch of questions um, who for the boys and the girls pertaining to characteristics and things happening in the house. First question was the girl that gives main character energy and Hannah was the one who America voted for. Second question, the girl who is here for fame and not love and Carmen was voted. <laughs> I have to laugh because I know that Carmen was not impressed by that. But her first few moves with Bergie and Victor and Kenzo were definitely given girl that's here for fame and not love 100%. So I, I totally understand how America got that feeling because I can see it. I, I wouldn't say it is what it is right now, but back then that's exactly what it looked like. Most bo boring boy, Harrison got that, which is interesting. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't say Harrison was boring, but if I had to choose, who would I choose? Seriously, who would I choose? I don't know. Maybe Keenan, because apart from the drama, what else is he bringing to the table? At least Harrison had a whole thing with Destiny, and he seems more lively with uh, Emily right now. But then again, I don't know. 
We only see like an hour of what they, happens in their day, so. But they chose Harrison as most boring. They chose, uh, for two girls, dating out of their leagues. This was a painful question and god damn. God damn, Love Island. They chose Cassie and Emily, which I wouldn't say that I 100% agree. I wouldn't say Leo is out of Cassie's league, to be honest. I can't, I can't say that. And Emily is a 10, too. Harrison is extremely, extremely handsome. So, if it's from a handsome point of view, maybe yes. Okay, no, you know what? All she kept talking about when they first started was how she was looking for a baby daddy. So, I can see how that might be out of her league. But, I'm not even defending Cassie here, but I wouldn't say Leo is out of Cassie's league. No. Who, but who else would I put in that situation? Um... <sighs> There really isn't anybody else that falls into... Yeah, I don't know. I guess it was out of the girls, these were the only ones who might fall into that scenario. Marco called Cassie Leo's sloppy seconds. And that pissed me off. You see, this is why... This is why Marco... I think Marco is not fit for Hannah. Hannah is way too mature and beyond all of this kind of bullshit. Because I just don't get it. How could he sit there and call somebody a sloppy seconds right to their face? I don't even think that Cassie has done anything to him personally. So why? Why? Wait, wait, where did that come from? Kai, familiarity breeds content, I tell you. I didn't like that. Leo didn't say, he had a lot to say in the professional, but then and there he didn't say anything. So maybe I'm thinking that they, him and Marco will squash it later on because they're supposed to be friends. So how you could, how you would call your guy's girl sloppy seconds is beyond me and poor cassie she was like i don't get it you know i really i feel for cassie look cassie is a better person now that she has been with leo she seems more even kill and um honestly more tolerable she hasn't done anything to piss me off in the last three episodes she's been minding her business it's been her and leo and she's been okay so usually i think it's just because of the guy the guys make you do crazy things apparently so i didn't like that i didn't like that for her and i hated that with Marco, which just solidifies the fact that I love it because Marco reminded me why I don't like him and it's things like this that make me not like him. Okay, so next question was boys dating out of their league and I wrote down, God, let it be Keenan. <laughs> and the answers were Keenan and Marco. 100%. I agree with America. Kudos, America. Um, in that moment, I had to pause and laugh because Keenan's face, when they told him the results, this dude wanted to cry. But I think... I think he, he wanted to cry mostly because America call, called it and voted for him. But he made it seem like it was because uh, KK also voted that he was dating out of his league. And I was like, you know what, good for you, KK. But my thing with KK is you start something that you know you don't want to finish. So I was impressed but not impressed with her calling him and uh, voting for him as being um, out of her league. Or voting for him as dating under... What am I trying to say? You guys know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> voted for him for dating out of his league oh my god english is so difficult and then the last question was two girls taking up space in the house and they did they they voted destiny and carmen yikes i don't even know how to defend this one people because yeah i don't know i don't know i don't know how to defend this one i didn't like that there were more questions for girls than boys though i thought that was unacceptable and they should have been equally Equally question. If one was for the girls, the other one should have been for the boys. It should have been equal. So I don't understand what production is doing, you know? The girl from Love Island UK <laughs> announces that one boy and one girl will be eliminated at the end of the night. I did write down, I hope it's Keenan, but let's, let's wait and see. I said, okay, no, I wrote down, I hope Keenan goes home. And you know what? If KK wants to follow him, by all means, because I'm done with this. I'm done with this whole situation. It's it's dragging on too long and it's not it's not fun anymore to watch, you know? It's not. Marco and Hannah have a chat after the game and he asks her if she thinks that he's dating out of his league. And she said no, that she thinks that they're in the same league. I feel like something switched for Hannah. She's she, It doesn't look like she's all in for the relationship as she was a few days ago. At least as she... At least before the hideaway. So I'm not sure what's going on in that scenario. They don't even talk about the games from the night before where she kissed Mike. Which 
is unusual. Maybe they already did and we just didn't see that conversation. Keenan whines to KK about naming him out of her league. She doubles down, but then she apologizes, which I thought was fine. I, he said his feelings were hurt, so it's 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 right to apologize for hurting your partner's feelings. But then she, she cuddles him and hugs him. And it's like, I'm over it. Let's just move on. I can't, I can't deal with this situation anymore. I just can't. It's not, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, no. Destiny straddles Mike <laughs> while they are getting ready for the evening and they kiss a little, they cuddle a little. She's very giggly. Um, it looks like there's something happening there. I don't know if there's something really happening there or if she feels like she might be voted out and it's, and in, is trying to keep her place in the house. I don't think that Destiny is like that, but we never know how people's minds work, right? Imani and Keenan break off. Keenan actually takes Imani aside. He thanks her for saying something positive during the games. Uh, people, she was looking off while he was talking. So I don't know. It almost seemed like she was like, what the fuck am I doing here, you know? I don't know how much she's really interested in him. She says she is, but I don't know. But he said, and I quote... I really, really do want to get to know you, but I'm just stuck right now, and I don't want to make you wait. This man describes his relationship with KK as stuck. Stuck! Oh my god. She tells him that Jonah made more of an effort in getting to know her, and they shared a kiss. That really set him off because... Obviously, now that he knows that he might be losing her, he's going to want her more. It's just the way psychology works, works, people. It is just the way it is. He says she's not a test and he is genuinely interested in getting to know her. It is signed. It is still people. It is in the cards. Keenan is going for Imani. Destiny and Mike are up in soul ties. She says that before he came in, she would have been good to leave the villa. Mike says he, he'd hate to see her go. And it ends with them making out. They really it, it really looked like they were into it. So I actually think that Mike likes her and she likes him. Keenan tells KK she's still his priority until she fucks it up. These were his words, people. I'm, I'm not even joking. But that he can't close himself up right now. He intends to explore things with Imani. For me, it's all bullshit. She's going to sit there and wait it out. That's what it looked like. It looked like she was sad about it, but she's going to be there waiting for him when he comes back home. So again, can't want something for someone if they don't want it for themselves. I think that he should have just ended this thing with KK and just said that, you know what? We came in hot. We were very attracted to each other. We took things too fast without actually laying down some ground rules. And I apologize for my part in that, but I am looking to see other connections and so in order to be as respectful to you as i can be i think we need to end this now simple is, is it going to hurt yes but in the long run it's better than this right now because this is bullshit people and i get it it's love island you're supposed to explore explore connections but if you don't have those conversations going in you set yourself up for a complicated series of events it's like everybody knows this but moving on it's fire pit time. The, f the girls with the fewest votes are Destiny, Emily, Cassie, and Carmen. And the boys with the fewest votes are Leo, Harrison, Kenzo, and Keenan. How did Bergie escape this? Look, I'm happy and I'm sad at the same time because I wanted Bergie to go home. Not before Keenan, though, which is weird. I want Keenan to go home first. And But he wasn't even voted at all. So I mean, I guess they guess they really want this underdog story to play out. And they show us the girls from Casa. I don't see anyone who Bergie is her type. Which I'm not surprised at. It's Love Island. The kind of girls that come here will not be the girls that will be looking for Bergie. Personally, I think Bergie will make a good boyfriend because I think he's going to be all in for whoever it is that he chooses or chooses him. But again, we didn't see that. The girls, the girls were okay, but the, the guys, the guys, people, the guys were, they were fit. I'm not even going to lie. It was like, oh, 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 <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> as they were showing them. The girls were like, hmm. But I also thought that Emily wasn't um, all that until I actually saw her in the main episode. So we'll just have to wait. Again, I think Casta is coming too early. But it's definitely going to be drama. 
and I hope that KK gets a clue this time, you know? I hope she does her thing, because I know Kinen is going to be doing the most in casa. But yeah, the episode was really good. Like I said, I'm going to lump Tuesday and Wednesday, no, Monday and Tuesday's episodes together, and that will be posted on Wednesday, probably early in the morning. Unless... Monday's episode is fire and it gets its own review, people. But I'm loving it as usual. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this. Please make sure you comment in the comment section. Let's dialogue, people. Let's talk it out because I'm really enjoying the series and it looks like it's gearing up to be hella, hella fine. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!